Hi guys, my name is Arya and today we will be talking about a very important constituent of web development and that is cascading style sheets or CSS in short. So if any of you viewers are actually accustomed to web development coding, you will know that web development is made up of three elemental files. That is the HTML file, the CSS file and the JavaScript file. Now, while the HTML file and the JavaScript file are responsible for the templating and the dynamic elements respectively, CSS is responsible for one thing and that is style. So how does CSS actually govern the style? Well, it does that by making sure how elements look like on a certain web page, example, their colors, the font that is in there. It also helps in the positioning of elements and it also does a little bit of animation. Now, let me just show you guys the power that CSS comes with. So let us firstly head over to our favorite website as a developer and that is Stack Overflow. So Stack Overflow, as we all know, has the answer to most of our questions when it comes to development. It's a pretty beautiful site and it's made beautiful with the help of CSS. So I have this extension out here, which is a developer's extension that comes with Chrome. And if I go to the CSS tab and just hit disable all styles, you can see that Stack Overflow is not a very beautiful site to look at anymore. Since the styling has been removed, the web page looks kind of redundant and normally anybody wouldn't actually go through Stack Overflow if it actually looked like this. So let us disable all styles again and we are back to the beautiful version of Stack Overflow. Another site that I want to show you guys to show how CSS can affect a certain website is called CSS Zen Garden. So in CSS Zen Garden, a single HTML file has been designed by many people out there online to look differently. For example, this is a theme that has been created by somebody. And then there is this mid-century modern theme which has been created by Andrew Lohman. So let me just click on this and show you how different it is. And as you guys can see, the background is different, the fonts are different, the pictures used are different. But in the end, it is the same HTML file. So this is how CSS affects anything that is residing on the web by governing the way it looks, the way things are positioned, and of course, simple animations. Now, why is CSS called cascading style sheets? Well, it is mostly because CSS has three manners in which it cascades. The first is through elements. So suppose we had written some CSS and we had attached it to a class called boxes and we had attached the styling of color equals blue. So this will turn every element on the HTML file with the class boxes into blue. Now, this is how CSS is cascading. It is applying the same style to multiple elements through the use of the dot boxes selector. Above that, CSS cascades through another manner and that is multiple style and one element. To explain this, imagine our boxes had some font written in them and I want to turn the font of the first box yellow. So for that, I can choose the first box. I can write some CSS that will make its font color yellow, and then I can go ahead and apply it. Now, it is important to understand what is happening here. First of all, the dot box styling is already being added to our first box out here, and the second style is being added to the first child of the box. So in this way, we have applied two different styles on one CSS element. It one sheet. So that is the second way how CSS cascades. Now the third way how CSS cascades has something to do with the third word of the technology itself and that is sheets. Now CSS is stored in the form of a sheet in your local machine when you save it. Now this sheet might have some styling written in it and you can apply the sheet on multiple websites to achieve unique and different designs. So as you guys can see, if you attach a styling to a certain web page with the help of the link tag, it produces a certain design element and this design element will actually differ from each and every website according to how things are styled. So that is how sheets are made to cascade through different websites. Now before this people would have to do inline styling. So having a separate entity which handles your style kind of solves the problems that came with HTML in the beginning. Now let's talk about an important aspect of CSS and that is selectors. So selectors is CSS's way or selecting different elements on an HTML page. Now the two ways you can actually select elements is through classes and IDs. Now if you remember my HTML tutorial, 
you will know that there are certain special attributes that you can attach to any HTML element. For example, we are talking about classes and IDs. So how are classes and IDs exactly used? Well, as the name goes, an ID is used to identify a very unique element on an HTML page. IDs cannot be shared and IDs have to be unique. On the other hand, a class can be added to multiple elements. This is for collective styling. So as you guys can see, we can add the same class to three different elements and it will apply the style that is there in the class to those three different elements. In fact, you can add multiple classes to the same element too to achieve a very unique styling. Now the classes are selected with the dot functionality while IDs are selected with the hash functionality. So to select a class called button, you would write dot button and then write your CSS and to select an ID called submit, you would write hashtag submit and then write your CSS in the curly braces. Now let's talk about property and value. So this has something to do with how CSS is written in itself. So imagine we have a web page and we want to turn the font color yellow. So our CSS is written in a property and value fashion. Out here, the property being font color and the value being yellow. Now you surround this property and value with curly braces. You add your selector and you have a style. In fact, you can add multiple types of properties and values into the same styling box to achieve a very unique look and feel. So this sums up CSS in a matter of 10 minutes. If you guys want to learn more about CSS, you can go ahead and look at my CSS tutorial. I have covered a bunch of topics that govern CSS in a lot of detail. These topics include stuff like CSS selectors, the box model, units, and even animation. Above that, if you want to go ahead and look at the HTML tutorial, I'll leave a link to that in the description below and you guys can go ahead and check that out before you go ahead and practice CSS. That's it for me for today. I hope you guys had fun learning about CSS. I'll meet you guys in the next video. Goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!